Good morning, everyone. Again, we've been talking about values in our very dangerous world, the importance of values. And in this session of Meet the Author, we are going to be talking about Chinese values. And it's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Liu Baosheng, who's the Director, Center for International Business Ethics and Deputy Dean, Academy of Global Innovation and Governance at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing. Um, He's done this fantastic book, uh, you know, two volumes, nearly 1,100 pages, along with his very demanding day job. So I think that's an inspiration to all of us. It's available. This book is available in both Chinese and English. And to share with you, I've been living in Beijing for the last six months, and excerpts of this book in English have actually served to induct me into the history and culture of China. So it's very useful. I strongly recommend it. And of course, as a Chinese academic with extensive international experience and research interests in ethics and cross-cultural communication, Dr. Bao Cheng is also very active on national television in China. Uh, in this book, he's captured the nuances and complexities of Chinese values as they evolved over the centuries uh, of continuity and change. So let's hear from him, a kind of narrow view as well as a long retrospective. Uh, but first, I think what inspired this book and what were you hoping to achieve? Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> I have been doing research and opposing, uh, pushing for policy changes within China over the last more than four decades uh, to converge more on international standards uh, and reduce uh, more of the Chinese characteristics, as a matter of fact. And I discovered that uh, China's rise over the last more than four decades was largely due to more and more heroes pop up to break the law. So it was those lawbreakers that helped China to change for the better. For example, uh, when speculation was a crime and those people with courage and desperate, they travel to Hong Kong to smuggle clothes the uh, CDs and sell uh, in the black market. And in front of my university, people were doing the black market exchange uh, between a local currency versus US dollar when the official rate was distorting the real value. And that was really there to, uh, to change China. So the, most, the first shot for Chinese reform took place in one small village in Anhui province, where the 18, 18 households decided to divide the land from the commune. And, and late in the night, they wrote a covenant. If any of us are killed by the government for dividing the land into individual households, the, the survivors will have to raise our children up to 18 years old. So that was a clear break of the law. <clears throat> but then the secretaries of Deng Xiaoping reported to him that they are breaking this law. Well, Deng Xiaoping asked him, oh, why do they do so? Because all the villagers were beggars. They exhausted all the iridium of begging and they, they are ready to die. So, then Xiaoping said, okay, let them do it. And uh, then the, the third year, this, they had bumper harvest by individual households uh, growing, the, uh, uh, growing their crops. And then they have, that's a good way. Okay, all of China, we have to divide all those commune land into individual households. They decide on what to grow and they will get motivated to grow. So that's the initial change. 
by breaking the law. So law is there to retrospectively to confirm the ethical value of some behavior. Okay, so that's my first ob observation, which means if the law is not following the basic ethical structure, it needs to be broken, it needs to be demolished. So in the end, I should say, law is a servant of ethics, okay? Without distinguishing what is right and what is wrong, what is virtuous and what is vicious, you cannot really make rush rules. Otherwise, you make your own self, make the whole rule embarrassed. So that's my uh, observation to think about ethics. Second, I visited a squirrel farm by an individual family. The lady was very nice. He was very sympathetic with those squirrels, seeing that the squirrels cracking the nuts, walnuts, pine nuts, so difficult. So the lady decided to crack with a, mach with a big stone those nuts so that our squirrels could have a happy time to eat those nuts. But uh, three months later, all the squirrels died. Why? Squirrels need to crack the nuts to rub the teeth off. Otherwise, the teeth will grow all the way so that he, he won't be able to chew anything. So that gives me an observation that a good intention means nothing. It could be destructive without correct knowledge. Okay. So now the immediate trigger for me to write this book is this gentleman sitting over. Stand up, Christoph. <laughs> and, you know, China is very, you know, those who have any experience about China. China is ready with many slogans. So they put slogans on the sky bridges and paint slogans on the wall and etc. So he watched the uh, a 12 character slogan, which was Chinese core socialist values, which we really had a fatigue of all those slogans. He said, what does that mean? Well, you know, the prosperity, uh, the uh, uh, democracy, uh, justice, rule by law, uh, fraternity, etc. all the wonderful words. And uh, he asked me that, uh, you know, what are those changes of those words? Pre uh, previously, before we had the eight shames and eight owners. So all those preachings about good things and bad things that for distinction. So it's more of a, uh, intention to build a consensus over ethical understanding. And then, so Christopher said, why don't you write something and to explain to the Western people about all of this? So I decided to research. So this book actually started from the first two, two chapter inquiry into human nature. So I really wanted to identify what is the commonality between China and the rest of the world, because so many scholars try to exaggerate the differences in order to show they are different. So there has to be commonalities. Uh, the commonality is that uh, people have the same need, although they have different ways. So, the uh, uh, John Condom had a very the uh, uh, direct observation. People around the world are the same, first statement. Second statement, the way they satisfy their needs are different. And that's called culture. So culture is merely a lifestyle, but people's needs are the same. So we all, need to drink, we all need to, uh, uh, to work, etc., etc. So from this, I would see that what would be the differences 
in some of the ethical values and what is what is really something embedded behind it. So we use chopsticks. You know, Indian people may use raw hands and we behind all these differences, there must be something that is common that make us, you know, coexist and probably collaborate. So that's actually uh, actually the intention of this book. Thank you so Th much. Thank you very much. We've just uh, completed our time. We've gone 24 seconds over. Thank you very much. And all our uh, audience here will read further and find out what a rich contribution this book is. So thank you, Professor Liu Baocheng, for giving us such an insightful commentary, which will sort of trigger further interest in reading this book. Yeah, also to, all its 1100 pages. Yeah, to to make sure that you are not uh, you are not a hypocrite, just by, by preaching the uh, ethics by this book. <laughs> <laughs> and don't expect global ethics, not to me. Okay. Thank you so much.